Hey, what's up, Sam? A uh, quick demo video for you for your uh, Saber by Space Junk Sabers, uh, Nevin Varner over there. Um, I was working on this all morning, just wrapped it up. Uh, there's a lot going on in this guy. Um, there's a lot of modifications that I did in order to get this guy uh, to be installable, uh, just to uh, you know try to make things easier on myself. Uh, it's installed the Profi V2. It's got uh, stock V3 MPXLs here in the main PCB. Uh, it's a two button setup so your card here your your top switch is going to be your activation and then your bottom tactile under here is going to be your auxiliary um, i made this with a completely removable chassis and it has a crystal chamber um, so to get to your chassis what you want to do is just unscrew this guy and this comes right off this has a little spacer in it to help push the chassis forward and that never comes out you can see that there maybe kind of a little bit um, when you take that off you've got this piece sticking out right here right so what you want to do is just kind of pull on this guy and then it pulls your chassis right out and we'll go over your chassis first um, so you know easy access to your micro USB right here uh, you will need to pop this guy up like that to get to your SD card and the, or sorry like this pop it up get to your SD card and when you're done snap it back down um, and that's it right it's a tight press fit down into this chassis you can see that chassis there it does say uh, solo sabers over here for me and then um, it says space junk sabers over here for Nevin uh, this is utilizing uh, the smugglers outpost switch pixel PCB set so you've got your 14 pins right here on this guy right and then you have a, um, a, a smugglers outpost 24 millimeter speaker in there now, I don't know if you could tell by the video I might I know my lights kind of bad too right I'll just leave that there but um that speaker is shoved all the way back here and it's in, it's fully enclosed and I did that so that I could get as much sound pushing forward as I possibly could and it sounds really good for a 24 millimeter um, I mean it sounds really good in general really um, and then a removable battery so uh, spring side over here is your negative and I'll show you how to throw a battery in We'll put that down and we'll go over your saber. Um, so the things that I did with this guy, first of all, there's an inner core here. It, it's it's attached to this black um, this black booster piece. When you take this greebly off, unscrew this, which which don't ever do that, right? So if you do do that though, then this entire core comes out and it has your crystal chamber in it. Um, I could not find a way to get my switch wires over to the switch box and not have this crystal chamber in the way um, because when this entire core comes out I mean that crystal chamber ends about right here and then you had an, an extra piece on your emitter part that when you took the emitter out basically you know one piece was like this the emitter and then the core and they slid into each other and they locked into each other but because they did that uh, and it was solid all the way around it didn't have anywhere for me to run my wires uh, for my switches so what I did was I actually took this emitter piece off and I dremeled off about uh, three quarters of an inch of, of this piece all the way around on the inside. You'll never see that, um, but I took that coupling mechanism and I chopped it off. Uh, that way I could use this space in here for some wire management. Um, and then where I would typically wire my, my pixel connector for my crystal on the bottom of the crystal, um, I actually had to do it on the top of this guy. Right, so even though you have a crystal chamber, it doesn't come out of this saber, so uh, you just got to trust me that you got it in there. Right? Um, but it does light up, right? Uh, so the uh, the neopixel accent is on top of the crystal. The shine through for the crystal comes through on these vents right here that are all covered in mesh. And you'll see them, um, and you'll see that a lot better when I wire this guy up. Uh, but your crystal is wired in line with your blade, so anything that your blade does, your crystal will do. Um, and that's what we had to do in order to make this a removable chassis. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see that in there, but that's the female portion of the uh, Smuggler's Outpost uh, uh, PCB set, right? And that stays in there, that never comes out. Um, although I had my distance correct and my length correct on my chassis, there is uh, a bit of just a tad bit of weirdness going on in there right in front of that PCB where, uh, where this saber was put together. Right, and I had to be able to push past that, and it's a weird diameter, so that's why this um, this ring is in this pommel like that because it gives this chassis just a little bit of extra push that it needed to reach those pins. Um, what else did I do? Oh, okay, so something else that you'll never see. I mean, I mean, 
on, on all of these modifications, you'll never see them. I'm just running through, you know, the different things that I did. Um, the hole for this clamp was drilled over here towards the handle or towards the back of the saber. Uh, and the, the crystal chamber got in the way of that. So I had to come over here on the other side of the clamp and drill a hole straight through as close to this piece as I could uh, so that I could run my switch wires up past the crystal chamber but into my switches. So that's what I did there. Um, other than that, I think um, it went pretty smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's throw a battery in the chassis. Remember, uh, spring side over here by the switch set or the, the pixel set is your negative. So don't ever put your battery in backwards. I like to uh, take the sticker to this battery and put it on the inside of the chassis. When did Kanan teach you that? Like he that. Didn't. So um, I put a few sound fonts on here just to demo the Saber. I did not want to demo this Saber with uh, the stock font package. I did that the other day. And um, I don't think I'll do that again. So I'll just throw some things on here to demo it. If you like these fonts, let me know. We'll get the, the money over to the font makers and you can keep them. If not, I'll, I'll take them out after this demo is done. Um, so on this type of setup, you can really put this chassis in any way. Um, but because of the weird diameter change that I've got going on right in front of that PCB, what I found is the best way that I'm, I'm, I'm just batting like a hundred percent right on connections is I'll take the top of the board and I'll line it up with this round knob right here right so if this round knob was facing the top like this whoops you got motion controls but um you're gonna want your board facing the top of the knob just like that and we'll push your chassis in just like that and, and the motion controls might go off on you while you're doing this. That's just the nature of it. That's okay. You can twist off the same thing I just did. And then um, we'll come in and we'll put the pommel on. We'll screw that on. And the last thread or so will be tight because it's tightening down all the pins. This is Lost Hero by Kyberphonic. Now, if you can see, you've got your crystal light up on all these windows. You can see your crystal through there. Just like that. So there is a real quartz crystal in there, and it has its own chamber. Um, but it's just these cutouts have mesh over them. Uh, so mostly, you will just see it light up. Like that. Now you can swing on or twist off, or you can just come over here and hit the power button. Auxiliary's back here. And you can tap it again to turn it off. Just like that. <clears throat> this does take a one inch diameter NeoPixel blade. Uh, the blade socket's super tight, so I'm not going to use your blade retention for this demo, but I'll show you where it's at. So, your blade retention screw is right here. Um, if you ever need to use it, that's where it's at, and, that, and that's, what that, uh, that's what that grub screw is designed for. But I'm not going to need it for this. Right? <laughs> Twenty-four millimeter speaker in this guy is super loud. So you've got battle mode. So if you hit the blade or the saber, initiates blade lockup. You can kind of see that about right here or so, and it will stay that way until you pull away from it, just like that. Or you could just tap for blast or duplex. We'll we we will uh, skip over the stock fonts. I will give you so much more. I gave you an unstable on this guy just to show you. You can see your crystal in there.
Just tapping auxiliary for blaster duplex, right? Now, if you want to get to your soundtracks, you just hold your power down for one second and then let go. You can start the blade up while this is playing if you want. What could you give me? Everything. Right. And then to turn it off, you do the same thing. Just hold that down for one second and let go. And we'll go to the next one. We'll skip over these, actually. If you hold this straight down and hit aux. We did this Loth Hero by Kyberphonic. Now we'll go to uh, this corn horn that I put on. Now you were asking me how to change colors. So when we turn the blade on, and, and while the blade is on, we're going to hold down auxiliary and tap the power button. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear it, but it gives off an audible cue. We'll try it. It was right there, right? And now you can twist the saber and go through the different colors that you want until you find something that you like. When your blade changes color, so does your crystal. But if we, if we wanted something like this, then when you find it, just tap the power button. And it, it gives you another audible cue that you've picked that color. So now that when we turn this back on, we've got that yellow blade, right? Just like that. So we'll do that again. Hold down aux and tap power. Now you can twist your blade or twist your saber. If you wanted that one, just tap the power. So now we've got that magenta looking blade, right? Just like that. And you can see it in your crystal. And that's how you change color. And it will remember that um, as you go through the fonts and, and change the colors to your liking. It will remember the color that you chose. Um, and you'll be good to go there, right? So we're going to take the blade out. Super tight, but that's all right. This is my longer test blade. Um, it fits in here pretty snug. And then I've got a shorter one that... Uh, I've got a shorter one that I actually did need to use the blade retention screw on while I was testing it. So it just depends on what blade you've got. Um, do a little bit of sanding, you'll be fine, right? Um, so to get everything back out, we'll just come back over here and we'll unscrew this. You'll have this piece sticking out, right? We'll just give it a tug. It'll come right out. It's pretty snug right now. Uh, the more times you do it, because I've been, t I've been testing this over, um, you know, over the afternoon, and it's starting to get a little bit better and a little bit smoother. But I make these chassis snug on purpose with setups like this, so these pins are all aligned perfectly to the inside PCB here. Uh, but the more that you do it, the little bit easier that it gets, right? So. And we just remember when you're putting this in, line up your board, your top of your board right here with this guy, this guy right here, right? Now it works other ways. Let me take, let me take the battery out of this. <laughs> just come in from the positive side and pull it right out with your finger. It comes right out. Now, it, it works going in any way you want to, um, but I put this in and out probably 30 different times, trying different orientations, and um, I had one failure one time when I was straight up and down with the switch box. Um, I, I, tried to, I tried to get that failure again, I couldn't, but I've never had that happen when I was lined up with this guy or anywhere else for that matter. Right, um, there is just that little bit that I'm trying to push past in that diameter change, or that that it's where the two couplers meet on the inside of the saber. Um, it's a, just a tad rough. I I think rough's the wrong word for it, but there's just a slight bump you got to get through. 
that's why this spacer's in here and it just seems to work better lined up with this guy i mean i had 100 percent accuracy that way so we'll put the um, chassis back in for safekeeping push it in and then we'll we'll screw this back on and yeah so that is your saber uh, let me know if you got any questions if not uh, i will try to get this out in the mail to you tomorrow all right thanks man